So welcome, um, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to this Open Air Open Access Week. Um, we've been um, presenting uh, during this week um, some of our services um, in a series, in a webinar series during the morning. And in the afternoon, uh, we had some panel sessions, a knowledge cafe, as where we are debating uh, also some open science related uh, issues. Um, just uh, some uh, housekeeping rules before we start. So this event will be recorded. Uh, we ask you all to have your microphones off during the, the presentations. If you want to participate, you can start and um, introduce yourself or to interact with the participants using the chat or uh, address some questions to the, um, to the speakers. Or at the end of the, of the presentations, you can uh, just raise your hand and open your microphone and, and um, present your, your question or doubt or comment uh, to, uh, to the speakers. We will share with you the, um, this recording and the, the, the presentations that you will see. And please uh, use uh, uh, our hashtags, openair underscore you or OAWIC or openair services or identify us in, uh, in the social media uh, at, uh, in openair or, or in LinkedIn or in Facebook um, and share this, um, your ideas and thoughts about these sessions in the, in, uh, with us. Uh, at the end, we will share with you, um, my colleague Andre will share with you in the chat the, the link because we will we want to have your opinion about this session. So we will run um, a short evaluation form for you to, to give us your, your feedback. So today um, we're having a, a session dedicated to one of our services, Explore, the discovery service of open air. Um, and this session will be dedicated more to uh, discovering research with focus on the uh, SGDs, the Sustainable Development Goals and Fields of Science classifications. And our speakers will be Constantina Galloni I, and Harris Papargiorgio. I hope I spell it right and sorry if I didn't. Um, so now I will give the floor uh, to them and uh, hope you enjoy the session. Thank you, Constantina and Harris. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. So let me let me share my screen again. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, we welcome you all uh, in this session, and we are very excited having you in this uh, presentation and the discussion about two novel services uh, hosted by Open Air and provided by Open Air Explore and powered by Sinobo. Sinobo is actually the research and development team uh, that uh, I'm leading in Athena Research Center working on science of science. Okay, let's briefly see the agenda. Uh, so we start with the field of science and the discipline classification system that we have been developing and it is already in place in uh, the Open Air Explorer. Uh, we will see what is the rationale behind this classification system, what is the state of play. For example, we do know that uh, there is a need for a publication-based classification system, uh, and uh, mostly what we see in the market, it is a venue uh, or a venue-based uh, classification system. Uh, for example, a journal classifies all the papers uh, in, uh, in some uh, fields of sciences, fields of science, and not specifically uh, do it for uh, paper by paper. So we go uh, at a more fine-grained level. There is a need to go deeper and see and take into uh, consideration not only the structural metadata of the publications, but also its content. So we do need a hierarchical 
classification system uh, that uh, provides these fields, these labels, uh, and categorizes publications uh, in more than one fields uh, according to its uh, interdisciplinarity or multidisciplinary content. So this is uh, the, the first uh, service, and we, we will see all the, the details. Then we move to, to sustainable development goals uh, and the classification system that uh, we have been uh, developing. And the idea here is to map out uh, the scientific developments and outputs to SDGs by assigning uh, to, to those uh, scientific uh, scientific assets, uh, assigning them one or more uh, SDG uh, classes. Finally, we, we, we go to, to Open Air Explore, which is a discovery portal of open science scholarly works on top of Open Air Research Graph. And here we go through and take a glimpse of Open Access, Open Air Explore and its main functionality provided to, to, to the end users. Uh, so the, the, we, will be, we will be presenting both services, both uh, field of science and, and SDG classification, uh, mostly in technical terms. And the focus is on the technology uh, in this presentation, underpinning uh, both services. Uh, the services, uh, as I said, are powered by Sinobo, uh, Science No Borders, uh, this is uh, what it means, and, uh, and, uh, uh, where, and both services were developed uh, in the context of the Intelcom project, uh, a Horizon Europe uh, project, Intelcom, where the, the main goal is to deliver a platform assisting and facilitating the whole spectrum of evidence-based AI-driven STI policy. And uh, by doing this, it is in the area of policy intelligence and how we can help uh, policy makers, decision makers and funders uh, by providing them insights and uh, KPIs. And all these KPIs are being calculated uh, based on uh, some analytics, a suite of analytical tools for STI analysis. This is one of the objectives of the project. And uh, under this objective, it is the work that we have been doing uh, by developing all these uh, services and the tools that we will be talking about today. So um, let's, uh, let's go, let's start with the field of science classification. Sotiris, uh, my colleague Sotiris Kotichas has all the details said uh, he will uh, give us a very good pres technical presentation about the field of about the system so tv yes uh, can i share my, my screen uh, actually yep yes of course okay. okay uh, can you see can you see the previous screen my screen actually yes yes Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sotiris Kotitsas and I'm a research associate of Athena Research Center. In the following presentation, I will present the field of science classifier that the Sinobo team has developed. The following work was also published at SAKE 2022, which was collocated uh, with the web conference. <clears throat> Okay, in this work, uh, we study field of science classification methods. And uh, as you can see in the example, our end result, the RFS labels at various levels of granularity, such as uh, natural sciences for level one and optics for level three. Field of science classification is of crucial importance if we consider the increasing number of scientific applications and how FS classification systems uh, can power a wealth of applications for scientific literature, including search engines, uh, recommendation systems, and science monitoring. Furthermore, it allows funders, publishers, uh, scholars, companies, and other stakeholders to organize uh, scientific literature more effectively, calculate impact indicators, and identify emerging fields of science, which can also facilitate um, towards uh, science, technology, and innovation policy making in various sectors uh, like uh, climate change. 
Okay, um, regarding the state of play, uh, most of the methods that currently exist perform field of science classification by relying on the published journal of the paper and its FOS classification or uh, like titles, abstracts, and author keywords. Um, in addition, some of them are focused on a specific domain uh, like computer science. However, uh, more and more journals uh, tend to be uh, multidisciplinary. Um, furthermore, text and metadata are not always available, and uh, some methods uh, have trouble discriminating between field of science labels that uh, share similar vocabularies, like uh, materials and metallurgy. Uh, our FOS classifier, on the other hand, uh, focuses on leveraging the structural properties of the publication through its citations and references, organizing them in a multi-layer network. Finally, we also create a hierarchical field of science taxonomy across all domains that extends uh, the uh, OECD disciplines with science metrics codes. Before um, I go into detail regarding our classification approach, I will briefly describe the field of science taxonomy. Sorry, okay. Um, the information field of science taxonomy is based uh, on the OECD disciplines and the science metrics classification labels. To, to unify them, um, we manually link the science metrics labels to the level two uh, OECD labels. The resulting field of science taxonomy is used as a classification scheme in our FOS classifier. In the slide, we also present some examples from the field of science taxonomy, along with statistics uh, of uh, the three first uh, so of uh, the three levels uh, regarding the number of FOS labels per level. Um, Finally, uh, the extension of our field of science taxonomy in uh, three more levels, namely four, five, and six, uh, is currently a work in progress, and we utilize community detection and neural topic modeling to generate these extra three levels and also try to discover emerging advancing field of science fields. Um, okay. Uh, this slide is an overview of the classifier, um, and the intuition behind it is that uh, a publication mostly cites thematically related publications. Uh, to create the classifier, we employ a multi layered graph approach. We try to bridge venues and publications by constructing a multi layered network. Um, the notes in the graph can be venues, um, meaning journals and conferences, uh, field of science labels of the venues, and publications. The edges uh, reflect the layers of the multilayer graph and can be publication to publication edges, reflecting citing and cited relationships between the publications. Uh, can be publications to venue edges, which are constructed uh, during inference times, inference time, inference time, and mean that a publication um, was published to that venue. Uh, venue to venue edges, reflecting uh, citing and cited relationships in their respective publications. Venue to field of science labels, which are provided by the science metrics journal, journal classification. Um, hierarchical edges between field of science labels and publications to field of science labels, which are the end result. The classification step consists of classifying a publication based on the out citations and in citations where out citations uh, refer to the publishing venues of the publications it references, and in citations to the publishing venues of the publications it gets uh, cited by. Uh, furthermore, we can also see uh, some uh, uh, pros and cons. Uh, real quickly, some pros is that we can classify publications with minimal uh, metadata, and we can also classify publication from the very first day utilizing its references. Some uh, disadvantages are that the, the, this graph uh, needs constant updates because publications uh, receive more and more citations uh, in the course of time. And um, because uh, we, we seed the venue to FOS labels through science metrics, very few venues uh, have labels at the initial graph creation. Uh, in the previous slide, we basically described the graph representation step. Here we can view a complete pipeline of the classifier. During the next slides, I will describe the red boxes presenting, presented in this slide, which are the graph creation, the label propagation, which is an iterative process, and the inference step. 
were given a publication and the required metadata, the classifier can output field of science labels. To create our graph, we exploded the open air research graph and we retrieved all the publications in the years between uh, 2016 and 2021, along with the references and citations uh, when available. Furthermore, for every publication, uh, we try to retrieve the publishing venue and the publishing venues of its references and citations. We also perform venue data application, trying to map the venues to their abbreviation. For example, uh, all the instances of uh, association for computational linguistics that you can see in the slide, they should be mapped uh, to ACL. As a result, we can create venue to venue edges, creating the initial graph. The weight of the edges uh, are the amount of times a venue is cited by or cites another venue. Uh, finally, to create the venue to FRS edges, uh, we utilize the science metrics general classification uh, by linking the FRS general labels to the venue nodes in the graph. Initially, uh, a, small a small portion of the venues have field of science labels, as I mentioned in the previous slide, which we hope to alleviate uh, using label propagation. Okay, regarding uh, label propagation, the, the intuition behind it is that a venue is more likely to express the field of science venue, uh, the field of science label of its most referent venues, like a nearest neighbor classification setting. Uh, we utilize the venue to venue edges and the neighborhood context of the graph to enrich the initial labeling from science metrics. Um, we dynamically evaluate the initial labeling, and after a few rounds, um, some single labeled venues might become uh, multi labeled. And I will demonstrate the label propagation uh, with the, a very simple example here. And uh, the graph presented uh, shows four venues, uh, which are the orange nodes, and uh, they are connected to each other through citing and cited relationships with the red weights. ACL and RNLP uh, are also connected to the field of science labels from science metrics. With, uh, green, with green weights, which represent the confidence of a venue to have these labels. Um, now to propagate label information from ACL, to RINL, from ACL and RINLP to EMNLP, we can basically multiply the weights in the path and uh, we multiply the red weights uh, with the green weights. And as a result, we can assign uh, to EMNLP field of science labels with a certain confidence. Finally, um, I will present um, an FOS classification example. On the image, we can view the publication we want to classify along with the title and the abstract. Now, given the DOI, uh, we retrieve the metadata of this publication at the first step. The metadata, however, that we need to classify are the published venue, the citing venues, which are the venues that cite the publication and the reference uh, venues. In the second step, we pre-process the venue names, deduplicating them and aggregating uh, their occurrences. In the last step, we input the required metadata to the FRS classifier, and by utilizing the same mechanism as in label propagation, we can now infer the field of science labels of the publication. Finally, we have the choice of propagating information uh, from the venue level to the publication level, uh, only through the published venue, which simulates a general classification approach through the reference venues of the publications, the publication, or uh, through the referenced and citing venues of the publications. And uh, we can also infer uh, by utilizing uh, all of the above, the published venue, the reference venues, and the cited and citing venues. Uh, this, uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, this, was, this was the presentation regarding the uh, field of science classification. Now I will stop uh, sharing and uh, pass uh, slides to uh, my colleague Dimitris Papas, which will, uh, which will present the SDG classification system. So thank you, Sotiris, uh, uh, for this presentation. Uh, the, the critical point in, in FOS in field of science classification is that it is a, a hierarchical classification system that works on at the publication level, not at the venue level, and this is its main advantage. Uh, it respects well-established taxonomies in science, mapping uh, by doing a mapping to, to those uh, taxonomies, 
And the third, it is incremental, incremental in the sense that it takes, uh, it takes into consideration the data as it becomes, as these become available for a specific publication, which means uh, the metadata uh, like the venue, the publisher, and so on. In, in the beginning and later on, the citations and the references of the publication. And last but not least, the content, the actual title, and the abstract of the publication in order to uh, classify the publication as accurately as possible. So these are the main features of this classification system. And we will see later on how this can be is visualized and can be used uh, by the end users in Open Air Explorer. Let's move to the SDG classification system now. Dimitris, you have the floor. So I hope, let me share my screen, start the presentation. Uh, so I will share my entire screen. I think it would be better. <coughs> Okay, so about the SDG classification system, I will give you an overview, an overview of the entire system that we have developed for SDG classification of uh, scientific publications. So, uh, why do we use, why do we want to classify documents in the uh, SDG categories? Uh, so, SDG categories are a set of 17 goals aiming to transform the world over the next 15 years as uh, decided by the United Nations. Uh, these goals are designed to eliminate poverty, uh, discrimination, uh, preventable deaths, and so on. And this is something that policymakers uh, need to classify uh, research according to these SDGs in order to monitor, evaluate the societal impact or uh, for policy making in general. So what we have done right now is that we have developed an SDG classifier and classified approximately uh, 8 million uh, publications that, can, that uh, had a DOI, a DOI in their metadata. And this data can be found in the open air graph. And uh, we have built a uh, silver corpus uh, for SDG classification, because there was no, there is no actually a gold SDG classification uh, corpus for to, to that end. And uh, our classifier uses the title and the abstract of a publication in order to classify it into one or more SDG categories. So, as I said, uh, the SDG goals are seventeen, and uh, it's. Goal has from five to seven to 19 targets for each SDG category. And the idea is if we use the open air graph and uh, the thesaurus that we collected from ANBIS, uh, we can build a classifier that makes uh, some first predictions for the publications, we can which can then be curated by humans. And these curations, these annotations, uh, can then uh, just come back as a feedback to the machine, uh, which can tune itself and give better results. So we started with ANBIS and the set of predefined key phrases and key phrase combinations for each SDG category. Uh, for example, for SDG 1, we have uh, phrases like homeless, uh, income, uh, the SDG 2, we can see crop diversity and so on, uh, but it, was, it is not always just a phrase, but combination of phrases, because uh, I didn't add them here because it wouldn't fit in one slide. Uh, and you can see the link at the bottom of the slide. So using uh, these key phrases and combinations, uh, we try to collect um, publications from the Microsoft Academic Graph, which contains approximately uh, 120 million publications, and create a small corpus for each SDG category. Then we will keep 90% of them for training, 
and 10% of them for development. So uh, we started with ANBIS and with these SDG key phrases, we queried an Elasticsearch server where we, we had indexed the entirety of the Microsoft Academic Graph. And we collected all the publications that matched even one of uh, these phrases and collected a, a little collection of SDG specific articles. From these SDG uh, articles, we used unsupervised key term extraction to extract more key phrases. And also we use the metadata to inspect the venues where we can find uh, in this specific collection. Uh, when a human inspected these key phrases, uh, he, could he or she could decide whether we should include the automatically extracted key phrases to our thesaurus and expand uh, this vocabulary. Uh, we did the same for Crossref. So we use the um, key phrases one more and create Crossref collections for each SDG category. And once again, we use the automatic key term extraction to extract key phrases that maybe can expand the SDG key phrases from Andes. Uh, so after we, we after we have done this for three cycles, so we expand the SDG key phrases on the left, and to, once again we query our database to expand our collection of articles, and then again we apply key term extraction and so on. Uh, this cycle is performed for three times, and we uh, finished in the third cycle, and we had a first collection of SDG. Uh, publications. So using these SDG uh, collections, we applied guided topic modeling. In guided topic modeling, you can predefine uh, the prior probability to specific topics and assign keywords or uh, tokens that you and uh, that you definitely would like to see in each specific topic. So since we had key phrases for each SDG, we assigned these key phrases to specific topics and forced the topic model to extract topics for each SDG category. So we applied guided LDA to both Crossref collections and MAG collections, and we extracted uh, 34 uh, topics for its collection. You can see here that for the Crossref topic model, for example, in topic 33, you can see malaria, tuberculosis, drug treatment, which is which would probably would be uh, SDG3, uh, which is about health. Now, also, you can see in topic one that there is energy, power, production, consumption, and so on. So using these key phrases, we give a good indication to the topic model to create uh, good topics. So all of these uh, outputs are examined by a human. Uh, thus, uh, we have a human in the loop. Uh, the human examines all the venues and the key phrases that were extracted by MAG and Crossref. There, we decided that uh, the venues did not provide any information. Uh, we could not we could not use venues to assign. Um, a specific SDG category to articles. So we just stick to uh, titles and abstracts and the key phrases that were extracted. Uh, so we, uh, through this curation, an expanded vocabulary was created from um, the key phrases. And then the human curator also examined the topics extracted by topic modeling and assigned a label, an SDG label, to each one of these 34 topics. Also, as I said earlier, we kept from these collections 90% uh, of the articles for training and 10% for development. And we trained um, two deep learning classifiers uh, that utilize BERT. We have one BERT model with attention that uh, tries to identify um, words in a document 
that can be explicitly used to classify the document in one category. And we have a, a BERT classifier without attention. Uh, so we're using these deep learning models and a, a guided topic model, which is our final guided topic model that combines all collections from all uh, SDG collections. We created three uh, models in general. These models are used in a pipeline and the results of each one of them is combined into an ensemble mechanism. So uh, overall, our data were created using uh, the ANBIS thesaurus. We collected and cleaned all the data, um, and then we assigned its ANBIS term to an SDG category. Thus, we created a control vocabulary uh, version one. Then we used the, this vocabulary to collect articles, and uh, we, through key term extraction, we expanded this vocabulary and uh, created vocabulary V2, and then uh, we created the uh, version three of the vocabulary. Uh, thus, we have created a silver corpus from documents that we believe that uh, should be assigned the uh, SDG category uh, from their, their corresponding key phrases. Uh, overall, the methodology can be seen in this uh, slide. We have keyword matching. Then uh, in step two, we have the training data collection. Then we apply topic modeling. Then we train on deep learning models. We apply these deep learning models and the topic models to infer the SDG categories of the publications. And then we give these uh, publications to humans for evaluation. Then after this evaluation, the second cycle begins in order to uh, create, to identify better uh, collections and uh, create better topics and uh, better deep learning models and so on. We have done a, a small evaluation using um, some people from the United Nations. Uh, they provided us some PDF files with uh, 170 meeting records and we extracted speeches from these records from these files, which are paragraphs where a human talks about a specific topic. This could be either SDG related or not. Using our classifiers, we classified these um, paragraphs and we gave to the UN people a form, a Google form with these data to apply their evaluation. Uh, we can see on the uh, right part of the slide that in 80.6% of the times, the human evaluators agreed with uh, what the system decided. And this was all for me. Okay, thank you, Dimitris. So the, the key point, the takeaway message from the SDG classification system uh, is that it is also an incremental system uh, and uh, what we actually measure is the relevance of the publications and the scientific artifacts uh, uh, related to uh, SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. It is the essence and the, 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 the point to emphasize here is that we measure relevance. At the next step, uh, we will. Uh, we are actually working on that. Uh, at the next step, uh, the interest is on uh, the intended impact. The, uh, to what extent uh, a specific uh, scientific work contributes in uh, contributes to a specific sustainable development target, to a specific, to a specific goal, and this contribution is in uh, in the sense of an intended impact. Uh, and uh, later on, at the third step, uh, the idea is to, to try to, to, to see and uh, track and monitor uh, to what extent scientific developments had an actual impact on those sustainable development goals. So it is an incremental in the sense that we go from relevance to intended impact to actual impact of scientific, uh, scientific of research uh, in as it is uh, as it is stated in, in scientific literature. 
uh, the, both services, uh, as I said, are hosted and uh, integrated uh, loosely into OpenAir, and uh, they are exposed through an API uh, to OpenAir Explore. And uh, Constantina will uh, guide us now how to make use of both services as an end user. Constantina. Hello from Edo. Let me share my screen. All right. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Oh, Hi, I'm Constantina Galoni. I'm working for OpenAir, and today I'm going to, uh, to, uh, to present you OpenAir Explore, uh, which is a portal for discovering research, and we, uh, we will focus on uh, the sustainable development goals and fields of science classifications. Uh, the Open Air Explore is built on top of the Open Air Research, Research Graph, which is uh, one of the largest uh, open scholarly records, record collections worldwide. Uh, we, we are also embrace uh, the need to, uh, to map research uh, products with uh, these two classifications we, we mentioned. Uh, so we inter integrated them into the Open Air research graph. Um, okay, so uh, if you can see on, in my screen, uh, I, right after, in the first page, right after the, the search form, uh, we're promoting, uh, I'm sorry, in a moment, uh, we're promoting uh, the, these two classifications with uh, two links uh, for some special pages. All right. Sorry, sorry. Great. Uh, these two classifications uh, are able uh, help us to, to view contributions of research towards complex uh, challenges of humanity. Um, Okay, we will see now the specific page about fields of science. Uh, we have a specific page for that uh, where we uh, we are showing uh, all the available levels uh, of this classification. On the left side of the page, we can see a navigation menu uh, of the first level of them. And uh, we are also uh, have added a search form so that the uh, users can search among uh, all levels and uh, if, even uh, with keyword or with a specific field of science. Uh, on the, if uh, someone searches uh, for a keyword, the, this keyword is highlighted. Uh, okay, sorry, I just... Uh, <laughs> A small window that doesn't help. Um, yes, the the highlight uh, the keyword is highlighted. Uh, we can search among all uh, the levels, and each uh, level is clickable, and uh, leads to the search page where this uh, uh, this field of science is uh, used as a filter in order to narrow down the results. Uh, about the sustainable development goals. We have also a specific page uh, where we are promoting them. And uh, here we are presenting each uh, goal with a card uh, where we were showing the number of research products in open air that is uh, related to the specific goal. Uh, each card is also clickable and uh, leads to the search page again uh, as a filter. Uh, Open Air Explorer, of course, uh, is not only about uh, these two classifications. Uh, it's a representation of uh, Open Air Graph. So we, uh, we are uh, allow it, allowed to search among research outcomes and uh, enrich the graph 
uh, with three basic functionalities. Uh, the first functionality is search, uh, where users can search and filter uh, among uh, a big variety of research outcomes, uh, organizations, data sources, and uh, projects. And they can also download uh, research results and uh, some reports about them. Uh, we, in the second, uh, the second functionality is the link functionality, where uh, users can link uh, research products uh, where um, research products with other research products within open air or uh, with external results coming for, for example from crossref uh, or orchid and um, the this way they help to enhance the information of the graph uh, the third functionality is deposit where users can search and find repository or a journal uh, where they can deposit their research in open access. And um, it is an easy uh, access point for these repositories. Uh, the search functionality now, uh, we have uh, specific uh, uh, search pages uh, where we have for sim with simple and advanced search forms, uh, depending on the search needs. And uh, we have uh, it's, uh, for each entity, we have uh, search pages uh, specifically. Uh, the search can be done with a keyword uh, or by using persistent identifiers of scholarly works like DOIs, oh, sorry, DOIs, PMC, PMID, handle identifiers. And uh, we are searching for research products, projects, data sources, or organizations. Um, we have on the left side uh, filters. Uh, we're promoting, of course, open access. And uh, the, 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 the response is customizable. Uh, we can, uh, users can sort by relevance or date, and uh, they can choose of uh, how many results they want to see uh, in each page, like five or 10 or 50. Uh, then users can download these search results. Uh, in the filters, in the filters column, we have uh, specific filters for fields of science and sustainable development goals, uh, with, which help to narrow down the search for these specific uh, fields. Uh, when we uh, click on the view more functionality, uh, we see all of, the, all of them, uh, all of the available uh, fields of science or SDGs, and we are able to search uh, to find one easily or sort by their name or results number. Uh, the first uh, six, uh, which are the with most results related, are. Uh, with are viewed immediately without uh, clicking on view more. The, the advanced search form now uh, helps <clears throat> to, to uh, do, helps users to do more complex queries. Uh, on the advanced search form, we have uh, many uh, fields where users can use to, to search. And uh, of course, we have added there two fields of science and SDGs. Some complex queries, uh, for example, our uh, fields of science is not physical science uh, and a sustainable development goal is climate action uh, or something else. Uh, then clicking on the search, uh, we can see that uh, we have added three rules and we will see uh, the results just like in the in the simple search form. Uh, this is uh, how search results uh, are displayed. Uh, one result is after the other. And on top, we have uh, how many results we have for this search, uh, how many pages. And uh, here are the selected filters we have. Uh, these are the, the options we mentioned earlier, 
uh, research uh, per, results per page and uh, sort by option. Um, okay, and uh, on the on each result, we are uh, promoting open access with uh, the green color. Um, okay, also we on the bottom of uh, each uh, card of search results, uh, we have we are um, promoting some. Uh, indicators uh, from uh, our integration with BIP Finder. Um, and uh, there is also the option uh, to, to add this result to, uh, to the user's ORCID record. Um, this is uh, a more detailed uh, uh, view of uh, when we hover uh, on these uh, impact factors, how they are presented. Uh, when clicking on the title of its uh, research result, uh, we are going to the detailed page, which is uh, tailored for its entity, uh, which means we have uh, information uh, specific uh, depending on if we uh, uh, we're seeing uh, publications or uh, research data or projects, organizations, data sources. Uh, this is an overview and uh, of uh, all the metadata uh, the graph has uh, about this specific research outcome. Uh, we can uh, see that uh, on, uh, on the bottom we have uh, many tabs uh, for the relationships uh, between this uh, research outcome, uh, research product, uh, with other research products, uh, with links to other uh, research products within the graph. Uh, we are offering some statistics and metrics. Uh, we're offering actions, for example, uh, share in social media, uh, cite this article, uh, add to work ID. And uh, on the right side, uh, we have some more information. Uh, between them, we have uh, the SDGs and the fields of science related to this research, uh, research outcome. Uh, we're presenting two of them. And uh, if uh, there are more, we can click on view all uh, link. And uh, the, um, the left column, uh, the, sorry, the right column, uh, changes um, the, its view in order to, to show all of them available. Um, they are also clickable in order to be able to search uh, with them and, um, and be uh, used as filters in the search page. And uh, we also have uh, the feedback uh, button uh, in order to promote feedback from users uh, which is uh, more than welcome. Uh, when clicking on the feedback button, uh, we are going to a feedback form. Uh, we can uh, add feedback uh, for, uh, for many of the metadata of this record. Uh, but if we click uh, for specifically for the fields of science or sustainable development goals, uh, the, this uh, this field is pre-selected, uh, so we can uh, instantly uh, add our comment here, like if this uh, um, if this field of science uh, or SDG is uh, wrong, if it uh, if something is missing, or if uh, something uh, additional needs to be added. Um, this is the list, uh, a preview of the list of all the available fields for the metadata of this research outcome. Uh, for, uh, um, we also uh, mentioned uh, that uh, we have uh, the Add to Orchid uh, functionality, uh, which is uh, accessible uh, through the research results page, uh, the search page or the detailed page of uh, this result. Uh, by clicking off uh, this uh, on this, uh, we are granting 
open air uh, to access and update the ORCID record and works. And then we can easily add, uh, we are doing this only once. And um, then we can easily add the res this research product in our ORCID record where we can see it um, immediately. Uh, we are also uh, offering uh, the My ORCID links page where, where we can uh, summarize our links added uh, to, to the ORCID uh, record uh, via uh, Open Air Explorer. Um, this this functionality um, this functionality is a bit new and uh, it's uh, it's integrated uh, with the search and link wizard. Uh, the second functionality we mentioned is linking. Uh, in linking, uh, we can sorry we can uh, uh, allow users to, to enhance the graph with relationships. And uh, we can um, link a research outcome with other research outcomes, as we said, uh, either from open air inside from open air or uh, via, uh, from Crossref data site or ORCID, which are external sources. And uh, we can link it with other uh, research uh, outcomes or with uh, projects we, or with communities. Uh, here is the list on the second step where we are linking uh, this specific research uh, product we have selected uh, with uh, the other three. The deposit functionality now uh, is uh, an easy, it helps uh, we have the, the get started uh, button. Uh, in order to, to start uh, searching and find uh, the, the repository or journal we, we wish to, to deposit our research, uh, we, on the first page, we are also uh, have added some uh, details of uh, how this can be uh, completed, how this can uh, be done. And um, on the second step, we, we are selecting if we want to search in open air uh, for the repository we, we need, or if we want to deposit directly to, this, to Zenodo, which is uh, the, the default repository for open air. Uh, in the deposit uh, page, search page, we can uh, help users uh, to find and deposit their research and go to the repository. So this is an easy access point uh, to the repository in order to, to deposit. Uh, for the future steps now, we have uh, already planned some uh, improvements in uh, search user experience and also the search results uh, that uh, we, we are presenting in a keyword search. Uh, and also the response time. Uh, we have also planned some impro improvements and enhancements uh, depending uh, for, for impact factors. Uh, for example, for the Bib Finder integration we mentioned before. And uh, we are going to add more levels in fields of science and uh, do some improvements in the SDGs classifications. Uh, for the SDGs classification specifically, uh, we are uh, doing currently some checks, some improvements and some revisions that will be available very, very soon. Uh, thank you. Okay, Your... thank you, Kustadina. Thank you, Kustadina. So, uh, as Kustadina mentioned, both services are in beta, so try to stay tuned and keep up with the developments as there will be major revisions and updates in the coming weeks. And uh, more services will be added, uh, more Sinobo services will be added to, to Open Air Explorer. Uh, we have been using this, uh, these services in several use cases in several areas. 
uh, from OpenAI Explore, uh, the target group is the end users, the researchers, the labs, the universities and the institutions that can take advantage and discover uh, other research, uh, other publications or, uh, that have value and contributed to SDGs, for example, in their own field. For European Union, we have been using this framework uh, in order to to monitor as a flagging mechanism, actually, in order to monitor and track uh, scientific developments in various cross-cutting issues like interdisciplinarity, like the contribution of social sciences or the sustainable biodiversity and development. Uh, this was a cross-cutting issue in H2020. Uh, and the way we did it is by using these services, we can uh, come up with some good indicators, some good KPIs of how to monitor the developments in, in those areas, in those cross-cutting issues. Uh, I think this is all uh, that we can start the discussion. Paula, the floor is yours. Uh, back to you. Yes, Harris, uh, thank you so much. And thank you all for this very detailed um, presentation and um, how, how this uh, FOS FOS and uh, SGDs are being integrated in, the, in, um, in open air uh, research graph and then all the users can, can view and access and search via the discovery portal. And um, we also um, yesterday uh, saw some, just a, a slide uh, um, of this, of how it is being used uh, in other services like um, the, the Connect, the, the Community Gateway. And we saw even a, um, an example from uh, the, the Aurora Consortium, University Consortium is, um, using these uh, uh, SGDs in the in the in the community gateway they the connect uh, um, made uh, for 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 them with a um, within a collaboration between Aurora and and uh, open air so um I don't know if you have um, from the audience if there are some questions comments some doubts that um, maybe you have so um, feel free to open your mic and um, address some questions to the speakers. Um, so we have here one from Emilia from Portugal. It seems a great work. It wasn't clear for me how can we extract a collection of publications according to SGDs coming from a specific source like a repository. So I don't know if um, which one would like to answer. So let me answer this question. Um, okay. So we have a repository like uh, the Microsoft Academic Graph, and the Microsoft Academic Graph contains uh, metadata for each article, uh, such as title and abstract. Given that we have uh, an SDG specific vocabulary so for each SDG category we have let's say 100 uh, phrases we use these phrases and query um, this database this uh, repository uh, and when a, a key phrase is matched either in the title or the abstract then we collect this document and put it in the uh, collection of the specific SDG category so uh, the first collection would be each and every article that contains um, key phrases from the SDG vocabulary. Did I answer the, your question? Emilia, I don't know if um, it helps or um, if you want to open your microphone and-, and... Okay, Partly, I think that also okay. Constantina can also uh, add sure. to this. So I don't know if there is uh, any functionality uh, where in the Open Air Explore service uh, portal where you can filter out the results that Dimitris mentioned according to a specific repository. So I want the SDG related publications that come yeah, from yes, a specific yes. repository. That was yes, that, the, that the was the question. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, exactly. Uh, this is what, what I was going to add. Uh, yes, uh, of course, we have a uh, 
the, the simple search and the advanced search form. Uh, the advanced search form, of course, allows more complex queries. So we can uh, add there that we, we want to result for this specific uh, SDG. And uh, the provider is the, the specific one. So we have a subset of them uh, specifically for this source. Thank you. you. Do you want to say something? Because yeah. I think I think she tried already, but she couldn't find um, her repository uh, from her university. Was that something like that? Uh, no. In fact, we uh, I've tried, but not uh, now, not the um, in this uh, session. Before I was trying, and I didn't uh, find the the specific repository. But I will do it again and uh, maybe that's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Emilia, thank you. Uh, if you. If you need uh, something specific that you cannot find it, uh, please contact us. Uh, I can share I think it's you. related because um, you, you, when you make a search on Explore, um, you will only see the, um, a limited number of the, um, the, the the highest score repositories or the high numbers in and uh, I don't know if extracting the information or in, emailing you uh, if Emilia can have the specific um, information uh, related to her repository or if using or um, the monitor the monitor dashboard for for institutional um, if if this is a, a way to to have also this this kind of of information uh yes uh, on the simple search page uh, on the filters column uh, we have uh, the repositories but uh, they're only uh, the top 100 uh, so if we if we use the advanced search form we can search for uh, like a keyword for for with the name of this repository and uh, you can find it uh, another way is to go to the search uh, data sources page, uh, find the specific. So maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, Constantini, if you can share your screen and show uh, um, instead of um, maybe showing it, it will help. I don't know if you can do it. Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Just give me a moment. Thank you. All right. Okay, you can see the Open Air Explorer. So if we go to the advanced search page, we can select the SDG is climate action, for example, actually, and um, collected from data source is, I don't know which one should be, let's say Bielefeld. University of Algarve. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure, I just chose one. Okay. So if we go there, we can see the results. Another way is to go to the search data sources, search for Okay, sorry. Find it. Okay, not this one. Must be. Ah, oh, which one is it? Okay, let's let's take this one. And if there are, uh, okay, yes, if there are publications, we can find it from here. Uh, we were also uh, seeing. A small subset of them. So if we go to view all, we are going directly to the search page, and we can uh, add rule for the SDGs we we want. I'm not sure if discovered your question. Yes, thank you, thank you. I, I think it helped. Um, okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. 
Is there any more questions or comments that um, anyone from the audience would like to, to raise now? We still have some minutes, so feel free 